Hello everybody to this tiny tutorial. Um, in this video it's all about music and keyframing shaders on the music. Um, I will use scripts in this tutorial because um, I think personally it's not really good to don't use scripts. So I will personally use my own scripts that I will um, or is public and can be just downloaded right away um, but this script is previously made from a person I know um, his scripts is way better than mine it had way more advanced options and shit like this graph um, so if you really want a better tool you just go for that I dropped for above a link in the description but I will show how it works with my free version so everybody can just recreate the video itself. Um, yeah, for above is the link in the video description. Um, I have here um, a basic Unity scene. It's a whole new project. Everything I've imported is like four folders. Um, an animation clip folder that's empty. We will do stuff there later. Um, a music folder or audio, where I just imported an audio that we use. A, a material folder, where I put a material of the default shader on it. And of course, the script itself. Um, yeah, how I start personally, or how you need to start with my script, is you get that audio, put it on there, you center it, and put the script on it. You can just Click on add component and search for music sync. Uh, then you find it or you just go in the folder and just drag and drop it on there. Um, it will also create an animator so you don't need to do it yourself. Um, after that you go on the animation tab. You can open it with Control 6 or over the drop down window. And here animation shortcut Control 6. Then you will get like this window somewhere and then I just drag and drop it down here because it's a timeline and it's like the longest bar we have right here. Uh, yeah. So what you're gonna do is open this, right click here and just, I don't know, get a cube or whatever you want a keyframe. Keyframe will work with any values or yeah stuff that's Underneath, like you have here the animator, so this can control everything underneath. But just say you have like the cube here and the animator here, you can't control something out of that. So just make sure the stuff you want to keyframe is inside of it. And then just go right away. Um, I know personally that I have to get the volume down because it's 10 times louder for the record. This should work. And yeah, my strips needs to be in the play mode, so we just go in the play mode. So what we're gonna do is we create one. Uh, we create an cl animation clip. Um, for that, I choose the path. For me, it's animation clip folder. And then I just call it keyframe clip. Just make sure you will recognize the clip. Not that you have like a project where you have like 10 animation clips and you don't know what is what. So what I'm gonna do is I just wanna show you how to keyframe the basics. So simply you click on this red button and then you can change values of like shaders of objects like transform, rotation, or you can also change scripts over at that. You can also keyframe, um, and I show you real quick. Um, if I'm gonna just say this one is red and this is white, this is just a preview. So if I'm gonna here say at default it's a white one and over here it will change to red and then again white somewhere it will change between those 
Oh yeah. What I forgot is that the script is already working. So you can also like keyframe changes of like materials. Just wanna show real quick. Um yeah. So you already hear the music. Uh what my script is doing basically. Um normally if you go on a play mode this audio will start right away and will just play until it ends. What the script is doing, it stops the music at the same time as you're in a timeline. So if I'm gonna say we need some basic values, let's just keyframe the color. So we have like a default white one and we want after one second or like 60 samples, it's turning red and on 120 it's turning white again we have like um and they already hear the music so what the script is doing simply just play it and we can just skip to a point where you want that it starts basically and this will allow us to basically go to the position and the timeline that you're working on so you don't need to rewatch all your animation that's going like six seven minutes so this will just help help you out so what you're gonna do is like let's get rid of that again find um the position of where you want to keyframe it this Audio I choose because there's um that drum is really clean and you can really hear it out so it's pretty good to show you so I'm going to say the clap is right here on the drum and then I will keyframe it from white to red and because it's a clap we just don't want it fade because normally this will just fade. We don't want that, so we just go in front of this keyframe and say it's white, and then it will just jump from white to red, and then we just want that it's fade to white again. Just to show you guys. And then we just can copy that and post it on here, I think. And now we could go like here. And uh, just do it again, and then we can change. Change. Really trying to say what's up. work over here without like hearing the whole song over and over. So those are pretty good and useful scripts. So even if you buy Surf Cloud script, it's worth it. If you do a lot of this work, it will save you a lot of time. So basically, what we done now is just. Keyframe the the color, but just say if you want more than that, just say we're gonna keyframe even the size of it. So let's go and just say it should scale up. Okay, there I misspelled something, and there we go again to one down and copy that again, close it in here. And uh, then even Did I something? Oh, I just copied the color changing again. Yeah, okay. Let's go back and play it again. And there is like what you wanna do, you also could go like um let's say you wanted that it's tilting like 90, 900 like 90 and then it should go back so then you could do it like that and then you also changing the rotation, the scale and the color okay what have I done now this is first one and I totally broke the second one yeah, okay. Um, 
spice it up. Or and that he could do like the whole song over. But just now I also want to do... Let's get rid of that so we have a better overview. Let's just say we also want the trend not on that direction. Let's go over here. Like so, say 0 0.5 on here. Wanna go 0 0.5 and then just wanna go back to normal. Then we do look for the Q position. And paste it here again. Berlin's from Mr. Brand told me to spice it up. Cause I'm off the liquor, I don't really give a fuck. Money on my mind and my I wanna copy that. Berlin's from Mr. Brand told me to spice it up. I could go. I don't know. Berlin's from Mr. Brand told me to spice it up. Cause I'm off the liquor. Yeah, so this is like a pretty basic overview of what you can do. Berlin's from Mr. Brand told me to spice it up. Cause I'm off the liquor. So this is basically the power of keyframing. You can like keyframe a lot more like bones of certain characters. That's how basically your movements are done. Uh, what else? You can change the material switches like I showed earlier and a lot more stuff. So keyframe is a really powerful tool that will you use the most of the time if you do animations. Um, I can even show a bit more, to be honest, like, let's add some particles for it. Uh, let's just real quick go for something really dumb. I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. That's not what I wanted to show off. Uh, yeah, all the other stuff is fine. Um, now it will just play. No, I don't want it to play. That's fine. Um... Let's just do something real quick. That's not really much doing. So this should play right by default. Yeah. Um. Set this to zero. So. Yeah, I will just show this one. Radius thickness. Um. Yeah. So you can also basically keyframe. Every value in here, like start delay, start lifetime. I will show that real quick with like keyframing the emission. So we go back in here. Um, here is where you want it. And then we just want to keyframe the particles. Um, then we just say at default we want zero. On the next keyframe, we just say we want 99. How much are they? Fair enough. Uh, then I just want it once, so I just end it right away after it. And uh, that I will also copy on. Tiny gun back in here, in here, and in here. And that should also keyframe this valley. I will let it open like that so you can see it. Play and play. Nope, I need to go off that window, I think. So, uh, that may be bad. It's way too short, so it cannot play, right? Then let's extend this value. That's normally. Normally you can also shoot a shorter range, but yeah, let's just do it like that. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Infinity at the keyframe something. Circle can remove. I always press the red button and change values. That should it do it. Um, how many do I shoot there? Yeah, I shoot way too much. Yeah, I, I was right with the first one. Um, let's get all this keyframes back where they should be. This is not a perfect example of it. 
Fuck, yeah. Screw it in for Mr. Pratt to me to spice it up. Pour some off the liquor, I don't really. That's way too much, so we'll just increase that right here. Never do that in VR chat, this will cause lags, but just for show of reason. Screw it in for Mr. Pratt to me to spice it up. Pour some off the liquor, I don't really give a fuck. So yeah, you can also see that it's changing this value over here. Uh, yeah, this is basically the basics of keyframing. Um, I hope you like this video, even if it's like 15 minutes just for showing this few things. But yeah. I just want to show like newcomers how I do my stuff. There's also certain other ways where you do stuff because now we're in play mode and normally if you go out it will all be deleted. So what I personally do, I don't recommend it because you're in play mode, you cannot save. Um, if I do stuff like that, like adding stuff in the play mode, I always do like a new folder and let me just rename that real quick. Like prefabs, and we'll just create for prefab on that. Spice it up. And then I can just go out. You can see this is gone, but the prefab saved it. The keyframes they will be stay saved, so that's good. But just don't add stuff in the play mode. Go out, or even if you want to. Stay in play mode, but please make sure you're saving it as a prefab. So even if it crash or even if you accidentally go off the play mode, you have like a backup of it. I don't recommend it, but it's how I do it. And that's how I work with it. So, yeah. If you have other questions or need to know other basic things, please write me comments and just tell me what I should do. Um, I can do for everything a tutorial, it will be just a matter of do you want that and I have no clue if I'm the right person to do it. I do a lot of stuff in Unity, but not even I do. Yeah, I don't know what I wanted to say, so basically I just want to say bye and thank you for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment with what I should do next. and. Until the next time, bye.